What happens when a world-class nutritionist uses blood panels, cellular biology, and fact-based science to create and monitor healthy eating plans with supplements for her clients? Everyone wins. Welcome to Power on Your Plate with Haley Pomroy, an educational experience that gives you both the actionable and practical tools you can use every day to get your health, weight, and life back on track. One of the favorite things that I get to do every day is answer thousands of questions from all across the United States and the globe. And tonight I want to answer some questions that you guys have given to me. So the first question is, are metabolic differences genetic? Can they be genetic? Can weight gain or these disease propensities be passed on familially? Absolutely they can. And so it's whether our body manifests or expresses those genes that we carry. So individuals, we see families that have weight history. We see families that have cholesterol history, cardiovascular history. I had a gentleman that came into my office that was 35 years old and was on cholesterol medication. And he wasn't overweight, really. He just, you know, maybe had a few pounds to trim off around the waist. And he said to me, oh, I, you know, and I'm always wanting to fix everything. And he says, oh, don't worry about it. My cholesterol's familial. Everybody in my family has it. And I said, not on my watch. You know, I was like, you're way too young to be on Lipitor. And he was having physiological effects from it, some memory and cognition issues. So I do believe that there are things that we carry forward with us genetically, but it doesn't mean that we, as the person here right now, have to actually express them. So it's a really good question. Someone asked me, must I give up coffee? I actually suggest that you give up coffee for the 28 days of rehab. Coffee does stimulate the adrenals in a way that if you have a healthy metabolism, it's fine because your body doesn't just produce one hormone with the adrenals. It produces, yes, it produces cortisol, but if it's balanced and you don't have slow metabolism, for all the cortisol caffeine stimulates, it also stimulates another hormone, another balancing hormone called aldosterone. So individuals that metabolism isn't broken down, you know, I'm not a huge advocate of caffeine, quite frankly, just, you know, from a lot of health perspectives. But if your metabolism is good, most people tolerate caffeine very well. If your metabolism is broke, you get more cortisol than you do aldosterone, and it's very difficult to lose weight. So we have some great tips. You know, I tell people to look at things like fenugreek or feverfew for headaches, hydration. It usually it takes about three days. But I always say this. If it's really hard to get off coffee, that means your body's dependent on the caffeine for energy. But wouldn't you rather just have the energy naturally? So, but like there's Pero, there's all kinds of great, really good alternative things nowadays. Pero's not gluten free though, so just be careful about that. I do have you set coffee aside for 28 days if you have a slow metabolism. Your body doesn't have the ability to use caffeine in a balanced way. You have a tendency to produce way more cortisol than aldosterone if your metabolism isn't efficient. The other thing that we want to look at is caffeic acid, how it works in the way the liver both detoxifies toxins that are ultimately stored in the fat if we can't get rid of them, and also how the liver determines where or where not to put sugars. Does it store it glycogen in the muscle, develop healthy muscle, or does it store it for fat? So if the metabolism's off, we put the coffee away. Now, if an individual has a situation that they can't get off the coffee, you do it and you do the fast metabolism diet and you do the very best that you can. Why don't doctors know this stuff? This is why I own my own business and I employ doctors is because I'm very opinionated, obviously. But it's also because, as I shared with you guys, my personal health struggles led me to knock down doors and barriers. I've been practicing for 20 years. 10 years ago, I was banging down doors on doctors' offices to get answers and to get you know a foot in the door. 20 years later, they're banging down my doors. I've been flown to Brigham and Women's Hospital. I've worked with Cleveland Clinic, John Hopkins, Mayo Clinic. Several doctors fly me in to consult on their most difficult cases. And I honestly think that they're very busy and they don't have the time to neurotically sit and do all the research that I do. I finally found a place where my neurosis has a home. But really, this is medicine. Food is medicine. Food is our first line of defense. Culturally, it's used in so many ways. And I really do believe that the health crisis that we're in is going to force a lot more doctors to know this. Right now, I just get stacks of charts 
on my desk and they go, uh, 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 you know, help them out. Could you, you know what I mean? But I will say it's also about you guys advocating for your own health. When you get three to seven minutes with your doctor, if you're lucky, and you don't walk in the door, and I always tell my clients this. I don't know why. I love the number nine. And I say, when you walk in the door, I want you to always introduce yourself. I don't care if you play golf with them on Sunday. I want you to introduce yourself. I want you to tell them something unique about you so that they don't forget you. Whether it's, did you know my favorite color is purple? And they write, she's a little crazy. <laughs> or, or that you just had a child or a grandchild that graduated from college. Make them know who you are when they walk in the door. I work in a practice where we see over, not me personally, our practice sees over 300 patients a day. So they're busy. And although your concerns might be your primary focus, your concerns aren't always theirs. So I always say, first and foremost, let them know who you are. Let them know something interesting about you. Make them go, wow, you know, she's beautiful eyes. Something that stands out. And then walk in the door with nine questions and one request. So I always say, share something about yourself and ask them nine things about why or what's going on with you. I promise you, knowing, being in a family medicine practice, we have endocrinologists, nephrologists, functional medicine docs, DOs, cardiovascular breast diagnostics in our office, and they don't always know that you're interested in getting healthy. When the questions start to get long, that's when they pass them over to me. <laughs> they go, no, no, no. <laughs> but, you know, I can't really, there are phenomenal doctors out there that are practicing functional medicine that are fully aware. There's tremendous, you know, Cleveland Clinic, I went to a an event, a fundraiser for the Cleveland Clinic and cardiovascular. And it was just incredible and it was amazing. And they were raising money for their facilities. And at the end of it, the very next day for a breakfast, they were speaking. And this, this uh, cardiologist stood up and he said, we are the best at cardiovascular diagnostic. We are the best for intervention. We are the best for surgery. We are the leaders. We're pioneers in treating heart disease. But there is a way that you guys can never end up under my care. And that's by taking control of your diet. So we want to prevent the intervention. What if I don't have a metabolism? As long as we are breathing, there is hope to speed up the metabolism. Every day, our bodies are healing. I, you know, I was using the analogy the other day with my kids about a paper cut. And I said, isn't that amazing? Look at how fast your body healed. Can you imagine what just went on inside? You know, in my brain, I'm going, you know, are they getting enough vitamin K? Is it going to heal fast enough? You know? <laughs> but what I'm hearing from you is that your metabolism is very, very slow. That no matter what you eat, no matter what you do, your body isn't burning through food and fat, and it's pooling blood sugars, and it's pooling lipids in the bloodstream. And take the time to heal yourself. Take the time to look at ways to use food my program's very strategic because I'm in a clinical setting. We have in-house labs. If someone goes on my program and their cholesterol doesn't get better, I kind of look the fool, right? A little bit of pressure. But because of that, I really expect true clinical results from this program. And it was a stretch for me to actually go out and publish a book because, again, I've, as you've heard, I've been in practice for two decades. But, you know, I know my clients need me. And I didn't realize, I had no idea, quite frankly, what an impact it would make when I opened the doors. And it's been overwhelming. It's really been overwhelming. And we've had so many incredible people that have just had life-changing experiences. And really, it's just because they took the time to take care of themselves. It really doesn't have anything to do with me. What about artificial sweeteners? If it's fake, take a break, right? You know, I got asked a question the other day by a magazine. They said, what is the number one thing you could have people do to make an impact on their health? And I said, don't ever, ever, ever touch artificial sweeteners. Probably one of my biggest pet peeves. I mean, I'll make brownies and cupcakes and hot fudge sundaes at my house, but you will not see artificial sweeteners go in my kid's mouth. Did I say I make brownies? <laughs> we absolutely do. I'm completely opposed. I'm very against him. I cannot believe with all the science and research that's out there that we actually still have that stuff on our shelves. It is disheartening. Being, you know, I have a science background, in case you didn't notice. Being a scientist for this many years and seeing the studies that have come out over and over and over again, not only does it slow the metabolism, not only is the potential there for cancers, not only is the potential there for diabetes, 
I don't think there's ever been a study that shows that there are no side effects from eating artificial sweeteners. So it's one of those that there's a lot of things you'll find in my cupboard, but not that. What about someone that's gluten intolerant? The program is completely, you can completely do it if you're gluten-free, if you have celiac. There's a couple recipes and I note them in the cookbook. There's a barley recipe that's not gluten-free. There is, I sometimes advocate certain types of sprouted grain breads and those aren't always gluten-free, so you wanna watch for those. And as a matter of fact, it depends on why you're gluten-free. If you're celiac and your gluten intolerance is autoimmune-based, celiac is an autoimmune disorder, which I'm super familiar with, unfortunately. If you're celiac, it is so important that you keep an efficient metabolism. It is so important that your body's immune system, the anti-inflammatory aspect, that your body's immune system receives this kind of tender, loving care. So critical. This is a great one. Are vitamins and supplements an important part of the program? I grew up personally taking a lot of vitamins and supplements. My mother's an acupuncturist. She has a PhD in reproductive endocrinology. Her first master's was in optical physics and her second was in oriental medicine. So I personally am a huge advocate of vitamin and supplements. I know I shared with you guys that I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. I have a bleeding disorder called antiplatelet antibodies. And since I was 19, I've used vitamins and herbs, Chinese herbals, vitamins and supplements as an integral part of my health. I still go see a hematological oncologist every six months. And I love to just wow him and press him with my beautiful labs. And again, you know, stopped taking the prednisone and didn't have to do another bone marrow biopsy since I've been 22 years old. So for me, they've been a very integral part of my life. Do they have to be part of the plan? Absolutely not, but they absolutely can too. I use micronutrients therapeutically. And so in my clinic, I have a natural pharmacy, if you'll call it. And so sometimes we'll use, you know, sun theanine or theanine to help shift individuals that have depression or seizures at fairly high levels, again, under medical supervision. So I've seen it work profoundly clinically and I grew up with it. So that's kind of where I stand on vitamins. I'm over 70 years old. Can my metabolism change at this age? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have a client that I'm going to go spend some time with here on the East Coast who came to me at 73. And we went down like 27 pounds pretty fast, you know, just kind of changing a few things. And I whipped him into shape really good. I'd still, he's 83. And even 10 years later, I'm still after like those last five or 10 pounds, <laughs> just because I think he needs it at this age. <laughs> so age is not at all a deterrent for being healthy. As I said, you know, before I left here, I went and I needed some words of wisdom, a little bit of confidence boost. And so I stopped by and saw my grandmother, who's 97 years old, and immense amount of health, which I'm so happy for. She's very funny, though, because she is you know, very aware of kind of what I do and stuff. And so there's a woman that sits at the table across from her all the time. And she says, when you get back, can you work on her for a little bit? And I'm like, sure, Gigi, no problem. So, so age does not, in our practice, we have, you know, pediatrics that have broken metabolisms. So 70s, nothing. How much exercise is required for success? So my dream, my fantasy is that you'll do one day of cardio, that you'll do one day of weight bearing, and that you will sincerely do one day of non-sexual, intimate, physical contact. And what I mean by that, <laughs> says, what? Is that it's so healing to have the body stimulated. I mean, it increases blood flow. It increases feel-good hormones. And so massage is a really great one. I always say, you know, touch yourself often or pay others to do it, but please do it. <laughs> I always say that, don't I? <laughs> but what I mean by that is that, you know, we need that physical stimulus. So many of us, the only stimulus we get is, you know, pulling our pants on every day. And that's not always the most pleasurable experience. So, so we need that. Do I have a lot of people that lose weight and don't exercise? Absolutely. I firmly believe that moving and stimulating this body that we have is very important. I'm a huge advocate for physical therapy to individuals that don't have the ability and get after your doctor on this one. If you don't have the ability to exercise, if you've got pain, if you've got lack of movement, get into a physical therapist and, and, and lay there and say, okay, Haley said today I'm supposed to do something to cause microsculpting in my muscle. 
and they will take you through certain muscle movements that you won't hurt yourself with, but that you'll actually stimulate those hormones for repair. And then on Monday and Tuesday, lay there and say, now I'm supposed to do something to get my heart rate up. <laughs> and they will take you through a series of exercises that can help increase blood flow. And then on the third day, say, now I'm supposed to do something to stimulate my physical body. Maybe they'll put you in a sauna, a far infrared sauna, a heat sauna, maybe a whirlpool. I want your body to receive. And so, so many times we look at exercise as tearing down or depleting us. Just shift a little bit mindset wise and think about receiving. Think about that cardio allows your body to reduce stress and that weight bearing allows your body to sculpt the bone and the muscle and that being touched evokes pleasure. Last question. Do I have clients that stay on the diet for more than 28 days? Absolutely. Absolutely do. You could eat this way for the rest of your life and build on your health every day. There is not a nutrient that you would be deficient of. We have all kinds of plans for people that, I, you know, we call it phase one, unwind stress, phase two, unlock stored fat, phase three, unleash the burn. And then I have phase four, living your life on fire. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that as a community, we're constantly, you know, tweaking and playing with food and adding new recipes. If you have more weight to lose, you stay on the program and you cycle through it. And some people take breaks and some people we have ways that some people say, okay, I'm getting ready to travel. And so we flip flop the days because it's a lot easier to travel. That's why I put phase three on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I actually thought this one through. It took me about 20 years to get there. but <laughs> And so sometimes people say, you know, I'm traveling Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we'll flip flop the phases. So there's all kinds of tricks and ways like I talked about that we're putting in kind of from a supplemental perspective to show you how to deal in the real life world. I mean, my dream is that you'll kind of sit down. We've got super simple meal maps in there, individuals that like to make fancy food, individuals that like to make super easy food. Again, you know, we have five kids. I'm a big crocker. I actually was crocking and driving the other day and blew out a fuse in our car. Um, <laughs> true story. <laughs> and <laughs> true story. And, um, but that's okay. <laughs> but, uh, and I do a lot of freezing. I do a lot of freezing and I kind of make meals and stuff like that. And the food that I, I have in there is I made every single, again, I found a home for my neurosis. I made every single recipe myself, both in the book, which is 66 and 200 that are in the cookbook. Those I made just wanted to make sure they were easy. Thank you so much for asking these incredible questions and having a curiosity for your health. Thank you for listening to another inspiring episode of Power on Your Plate with Haley Pomroy. Please remember to share the amazing science and tools with someone you love. The more we know, the more we all lift our global health together. Visit www.haleypomroy.com to get notes from today's show and to take your education and health to a new level of success and happiness. Information on this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for the advice provided by your physician or other healthcare professional or any information contained on or in any product label or packaging. You should not use the information on this podcast for diagnosing or treating a health problem or disease or prescribing any medication or other treatment. You should always speak with your physician or other healthcare professional before taking any medication or nutritional, herbal, or homeopathic supplement or adopting any treatment for a health problem. If you have or suspect that you have a medical problem, promptly contact your healthcare provider. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking professional advice because of something you've heard on this podcast. Information provided on this podcast and the use of any products or services purchased as a result of this podcast does not create any type of professional relationship between you and any of the associates affiliated with this podcast. Information and statement regarding dietary supplements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.